Okay, so we've talked in Chapter 4 about how to determine the moment around a point. And so we've learned that to determine the moment around some point, we simply take R cross F. So, just to review, if we have some point O, and we have some force F, R points from O to F, and recall that it can point anywhere on the line of action of F, right? Which extends in both directions. So we get to choose that to make our calculations as simple as possible. What if only some of this moment was useful? For example, let's say we're trying to open a door. So um, here's a door in the wall. And let's say the hinges are really, really sticky, okay? So here's the handle. You have to pull really, really hard. And you have two choices. One is that you could pull kind of straight out from the door, okay? So that this makes basically a 90 degree angle with the face of the door. And from your experience, you know that that's the most efficient way to open the door, I hope, right? That creates a moment. So if I were to say, what's the moment at this point, right? Since this is R and this is now 90 degrees, that's the biggest moment. And <clears throat> that means that the moment points, and I'm going to draw it up here, points right here. So let's say that's F1. Oops. Then this is the moment created by F1, and it points or excuse me, in the same direction that the hinges lie in, right? It points in this direction. What, however, if you don't pull that way? What, let's say if you pull, I don't know, kind of out towards you and down, okay? So this is F2. So now I still have to take this, right? But now I don't necessarily have a right angle, and so uh, that moment, I don't know, maybe points um, out in this direction. F2. Oh, sorry. Let me fix that. That's not F2. That's M from force 2, right? So the question is, do you have to pull harder? By experience, you'd say, yeah, of course I have to pull harder <clears throat> to get the door to open because not all of the moment, the force that I'm applying goes into creating a moment that causes the door to open. So let's blow that up a little bit. So here's the, the hinges. They run up and down like this. So direction of hinges, which we'll call U of hinges, right? Uh, unit vector can define direction. Here's this M pointing off like this. So this is M from force 2. And we want to know how much of this moment actually points in this direction. In other words, how much of that moment will um, go into opening the door. So if we knew this angle right here, right, so call that theta, you can decompose it, right? You could say, look, here's a right angle. I drew the theta in the wrong place, right? I want this component of my moment. So that's m f2 times the cosine of theta, right? We also learn in chapter 2 there's another way to do it. So the other way to get the component of m, I'll write it right here, m of f2, I'm not sure what's going on, f2, that will say points in the direction of the hinge. is to take the unit vector that describes the direction of the hinge and the dot product onto the moment, right? And that now if we want this, right, as a full vector, which we may need from time to time, we have its magnitude so here's the magnitude. And we simply multiply it by its direction, right? Which we already know, it's the direction of the hinge. <clears throat> There's another way to do this, which is a little more direct. 
And that's to recognize that this vector right here is really the cross product of an R vector and the force vector. So I'm just going to replace this with M F2 hinge, right? So M of force 2 in the hinge direction is equal to U of the hinge direction dotted onto the cross product of R cross F2. All right. Now, F2 is the force in Cartesian notation. Sorry, this is an equals here. UH is the unit vector that defines the hinge direction, right? And R points from, usually it points from a, a point, right? It would be from R from zero, like we drew up here, or R from point O, to anywhere on the line of action of the force. When we're calculating the moments around a specific axis, the requirements for R actually are relaxed a little bit. So the head of the arrow still has to point anywhere on the line of action of the force, but the tail of the arrow doesn't have to start at a specific point. It only has to start on at any point, any point, that defines the direction UH, right? So this isn't from O to F anymore, although you could call, pick a point and call it O and use that. It's from any point on the line that defines that is defined by UH to any point on the line of action of this force. So this looks kind of ugly to calculate. It turns out it's actually just another determinant. So it's the determinant of this three by three matrix. Uh, the component of U in the X direction, the component of U in the Y direction, the component of U in the Z direction. The component of R in the X, component of R in the Y, component of R in the Z. And again, this is where you get lots of freedom to choose this to make it really simple for you, okay? Uh, then the component of the force, here force 2 in the X direction, force in the Y direction, force in the Z direction. So what this does for us is it allows us to calculate the moment around any specified axis. And so uh, what I invite you to do is to go back and work some of the problems, okay? And specify an axis. For example, you could say the axis that I care about is the x, the i axis. In that case, u would simply be i, right? So now let's do some calculate the moment the way we normally would. So let's suppose that r, and let's say that f. Okay, so for just a second, let's calculate m. Two. So in the i direction. I have 3i, oops, 3i, in the j direction I have 0, I have minus 1j, in the k direction I have um, 2 minus 6, which would be minus 4k. Now let's say I wanted to, didn't really care about all of this, what I really wanted was a uh, the moment or the, the component of that vector in the i direction, right? So let's get the component of that vector in the i direction. 2 times 1 is 2i. There we go. 1 times 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 0. This is 0. Minus 0. This is 0. Minus 0. So this is nothing more than the component or the magnitude of the moment in the x direction, right? 2. So we could have done that simply by looking right here. So when we um, set up our coordinate system, if the direction that we care about, we point in one of these axes, right? That can simplify things as well, because then it's just a matter of looking at the component form of the moment vector and pulling out the component we care about. Okay? The other thing that you should recognize here by kind of thinking through this is this 2 right, came from r in the j direction 
times the component of the force in the k direction minus the r in the k direction times the component of force in the j direction. And you could logically think through that for each of these other two components, right? So this is the scalar way of approaching uh, writing these moment vectors. And we'll do a lot of that when we get to chapter 5. So I want you to start thinking about, instead of doing these cross products, which are important and we need to be able to do, thinking about just decomposing the force into its three components, and then by scalar analysis, writing out this moment of vector without having to go through this. This is just basically a bookkeeping method to help you do those scalar calculations without making mistakes you should be able to eventually go straight from this information to this information without having to go through these cross products. For right now, go ahead and use a cross product to help you make mistakes, although even then sometimes you get quick and you, you do something silly. We'll of course work some problems in class. Thank you.